Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live for Claim Machine. No. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Facebook Live with Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Claim Machine. Thank you for joining me again on this one. Good stress, bad stress. Now, uh, obviously, in this day and age of COVID, if you're watching it live or if you're watching it in recent, um, we will uh, be talking about how uh, a little bit about how COVID and stress overall, what that can do to your body and some things that you could do to help with that. So good stress, bad stress. Before we get into it, I just want to do the uh, uh, disclaimer. I am not a practitioner. Nothing discussed in this uh, video should be intended nor should be interpreted to prevent, treat, or cure any health condition or disease. This video is for information, informational and educational purposes only. So thanks again for joining me. And um, we are going to be uh, talking about good stress versus bad stress. Now, a lot of you are aware, you know, bad stress is not good for you, but there is some good stress. There is ways to positively stress your bodies. And working out is one of the obvious ones. So physical stress, like working out. And working out doesn't mean just working out with weights. Working out can be playing basketball or or doing yard work or even housework around the house, vacuuming, whatever, walking outside, biking, anything, any physical activity can be positive stress on the bodies. Now, what do I mean by stress? So a lot of people think of stress as a negative and stress is not always negative. Stress can be a very good thing. Stress is a good thing when it causes adaptation to the body. Let's take a workout, for example. So a workout, you stress the muscle and the muscle responds by gaining more energy, uh, adapting in size and strength, and allowing the body to be able to handle that stress next time. And we talked about heat shock proteins or stress proteins in one of my previous videos. If you want to learn more about the actual mechanisms, how our body adapts to stress, check out the heat shock protein or HSP video that I did before. But this is a good example. So your body goes through a lot of adaptations. You, your body can gain muscle. Your body can gain strength. Your body can burn body fat. Uh, your metabolism can increase. This helps you stay lean, stay healthy. And I'm not talking just about whole body metabolism. We're also increasing cellular metabolism. That's the metabolism going on inside your cells. Now, a lot of good research has shown that by increasing cellular metabolism, by increasing the amount of mitochondria that are in our cells, these are little powerhouses that generate the ATP that all of our cells use for energy currency. It's like little, little banks. The more banks you have, the more money you can lend or more ATP you can lend to the other cells. And so when you exercise, you can increase your mitochondrial. This allows for a better adaptation on a cellular level. And when you increase cellular metabolism in a healthy way, you can uh, uh, positively affect overall health, including longevity. So this has been borne out in lots of research. Look up uh, cellular metabolism and cell health and uh, increasing mitochondria and stuff like that. If you want to read more about that, there's tons of research out there. It's a great field. It's one of the field of my passions too. You'll be seeing more from me in, uh, in the way of products uh, addressing cellular metabolism. Um, but also the body really finds positivity. Um, good neurochemistry can happen when you are uh, presented a challenge and then your body uh, recovers from that challenge, but also it revitalizes the cells. So when you have a great workout, it reduces your stress levels. You feel, ah, I got a lot of that energy out. The calming things, the healing uh, things are all activated in your bodies. All these metabolic processes are woken up and, and put engaged and allow your body to come to a renewed relaxation. So exercise can be a great way to actually reduce stress, even though it is technically physical stress. So that's an example of good stress. Now there is negative stress and negative stress Look, I hate to use the word bad stress or negative stress, but 
it's more stress that can have negative effects or undesired effects when they're prolonged or when they're not resolved. Um, so let's talk about what are some examples of negative stress, like negative event events happening. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Um, uh, negative stress can be like death in the family or a uh, job loss or the end of a, a relationship, financial challenges. These are all stresses we're facing. And obviously with COVID-19 right now, we've got lockdown at, at the time of this video, at least. We've got lots of different challenges that are going on in our lives. There's fear and anxiety, you know, fear of losing a job, fear of losing a relationship. Um, you know, there's anxiety, which is sustained fear, fear over long periods of time, um, like negative things that have happened to you repeatedly. So you build up this anxiety and fear over them happening again, and that can really hold us back from enjoying life. Um, and, but there are simple things like just driving on the road. It's, it can be very stressful, especially if there's bad drivers on the road. Um, work stress can be stressful, but it's also very good, can be very rewarding at the same time. Um, and then there's chronic stress. This is stress that's maintained over a long time. So our body has a stress mechanism. It's called cortisol. It's our stress hormone. It's released because Normally, if we were in nature and we're a po we have a stressor, say a tiger is coming after us and uh, ready to harm us, or even uh, another person who is threatening us, and we need to either run or fight, fight or flight. Well, our cortisol accelerates. This speeds up our mental processes. Hey, Fernie, thanks for joining us. This speeds up our mental processes. Now, when you have cortisol churning all the way through your day, where well, you got stress from your driving, stress from at home, stress from your work, and then you get to the gym and you stress your body even more, you've got tons of cortisol. And what happens is if you're not managing this properly, that excess cortisol can keep your brain running. And I'm wondering how many of you have experienced busy brain why you want to go to sleep. You just can't turn off your brain. Well, that's cortisol at work. That is cortisol. Oops, sorry about that. Let me have a my phone for the cortisol. All right, make sure we have our connection here. Sustained cortisol, and this is what was called chronic stress. And this chronic stress, when there's no release, when there's no sub subsiding of that chronic stress, can lead to inflammation and pro-inflammatory states and eventually even disease states. Now, that's not good because inflammation is the precursor to so many disease states, whether it's arthritis or heart attacks or strokes or diabetes, these are all based in inflammatory states. So that excess stress uh, and cortisol can lead to some very negative states. So, so what can we do about this? Well, there are clearly things that we can do on a nutritional basis, and I'll talk about some of those, but there's also things we can do on a practical basis. One, we can do things like yoga, Pilates, um, meditation to lower our mental and some of our physical stressors. Um, Meditation is great. And meditation doesn't mean you have to get in some Zen state. Meditation means just sitting calm and clearing your mind and releasing things that stress you. Just let them go. Just practicing letting go and letting yourself be now in the present. This will get our body into a non-reactive state, into a more calm and centered state. Uh, oftentimes, if we just take a few breaths, you know, I, I find myself, if I get really stressed about something, I just stop. I said, okay, I recognize I'm stressed. I go either hug my wife. <laughs> Hugging is a great thing to do too. Hugging uh, for uh, just a few seconds, even a little bit longer for guys. We take a little bit longer to get our oxytocin levels. Re releases this amazing chemical called oxytocin. Oxytocin calms us, makes us feel at peace, makes us feel secure, makes us feel comforted and nurtured. And hugging can do that. Just being with someone you, you care a lot about can do that. So, you know, there's lots of ways we can help manage stress. Breathing is one of those. 
Breathing oxygenates the system because when you're stressed, your system starts closing down and, and you start uh, uh, vasoconstriction. So let's look at vasoconstriction. So when you are stressed, your body needs to get oxygen and uh, hormones to your brain very quickly, like cortisol, so that your body can fire very quickly, so you can make quick decisions uh, under stress, like I need to run away or I need to fight right now, and your body, your mind needs to be sharp. Well, that's exactly what caffeine does, and caffeine does that by increasing two chemicals called norepinephrine and epinephrine. And those actually are vasoconstrictors. They tighten our blood vessels so that they're smaller. And just think of it as like a hose, a water hose. If you tighten the water hose, what happens? The water comes out a lot faster, it blasts out, right? Well, it's exactly what vasoconstrictant is doing. This is either through stress or through um, uh, things like caffeine that can then also increase norepinephrine and epinephrine levels. All the stimulants do that. They squeeze down our things. Now, normally, short term, that would be a good thing. It gets more blood to the muscles, more oxygen, more nutrients to the brain and muscles so that you can make those quick decisions. What you don't want is that sustained stress where you're squeezing down that those arteries so small that you're not getting the amount of blood flow. You're getting it really quickly, but you're not getting the volume. Once you vasodilate, like when you exercise, your blood vessels open up, they vasodilate. You ever seen yourself get that pump? Well, that pump is because blood is being gorged into the muscles because you need more volume of blood to carry both nutrients to the muscle and nutrients and, and the waste products away from the muscle. If you don't get those waste products away from the no muscle very effectively, what happens? They stay in the muscle and they start to cause damage. And this is that delayed, part of that delayed onset muscle soreness that so many people experience. So you want that opening of the blood vessels. You want that at certain times. But if we're constantly doing stimulants and squeezing down our blood vessels and we're constantly stressed, we're actually cutting off oxygen flow to the brain and to the muscle tissues and nutrients. So we're actually starving our body and our brain of some of these by being in a chronically stressed situation. Now, for those of you who already meditate and already doing yoga and doing the best you can to um, manage your stress levels, there's some great uh, supplements too that you can take, nutrients as well, adaptogens, whole herbs, uh, adaptogens, especially ashwagandha, uh, which is clinically proven to reduce uh, cortisol levels by about 24%. That's a, a central ashwagandha that we use in cell block 80. And then there, uh, cortisol has a direct relationship with testosterone. So the higher your stress levels, the lower your testosterone. It suppresses DHA and testosterone. And remember, DHA is your master hormone and it's very potent antioxidant effects on the body. So it's scavenging those free radicals and, and reducing damage to the body. So every time you're really high stressed, you're suppressing your testosterone, weakening your body, and you're lowering your DHA, which has that powerful antioxidant master hormone effects that help so many other factors in the body that you don't want that maintained. It And that's why we put ashwagandha in cell block 80 to help reduce that cortisol so that the testosterone and the DHA levels can uh, rise so that your body can strengthen, recover, and, and heal the body faster. And you can get more out of your workouts than you would in a high stress. You know, I look at people with those high amounts of caffeine, 200 milligrams, 300 milligrams of caffeine. They're just blasting their system with stimulants, constricting their blood vessels, stressing their body out. And that's really damaging, can be very damaging to the body. All that cortisol eating up muscle tissue. Now, cortisol can tear down muscle tissue. So that's why there's a direct relationship between cortisol and testosterone. So testosterone builds muscle, cortisol tears down muscle. If you increase cortisol by stressing yourself out, especially with over amount, uh, too heavy amounts of stimulants, a little bit of stimulation is fine. A cup of coffee is fine. Our body can adapt to that. But once you get into those high levels of stimulants, our body has really high cortisol levels. It starts tearing down muscle tissue. Why does it do that? Well, it's, cortisol is there for a very good reason. Cortisol is trying to scavenge scavenge energy. It's saying, oh my God, you may need to run and you may need to run very fast and for a very long time if you're being chased by an animal that could kill you and eat you. So I'm going to go grab as much energy from anywhere I can as possible. 
Now, it takes a lot longer to break down fat because of the cycle of gaining energy from fat. So your body first tries to get blood sugar, then it actually can go to muscle tissue. It can go to glutamine, it can go to some other sources too for energy, but it can go to actually break down uh, proteins of the body, which make up muscle tissue, and actually grab the branch chains out of there and use it for quick muscle energy to feed the muscles on a very quick and temporary uh, basis. And that's why simply by taking branch chain amino acids, they'll be present in the bloodstream already. And the cortisol will say, hey, wait, I don't need to tear down the muscle tissue to grab those branch chains to use for muscular energy. The branch chains are already present and that can actually help reduce cortisol. Cor body says, I don't need to do that. The body does it. Now that is a natural negative feedback loop of the body because when the cortisol breaks down the muscle uh, tissue into branch chains, which then can be used for quick energy source, the body says, okay, now that there's branch chains, I can measure that amount in the bloodstream and I can reduce my need for cortisol. So simply by putting that branch chains in there, either during your workout or post-workout can help reduce that cortisol, allow for uh, better recovery. And remember, reducing cortisol allows for the expansion of the blood vessels, allows for more blood flow, more oxygen, more nutrients to get to, to the body to actually help the healing and repairing. So there's some other ones. Uh, ashwagandha is a great one. That's why we put it in um, uh, cell block 80 and uh, branch chains are another great one. Um, and I just told you the mechanisms, but B12 is, uh, and B complex, very good because our body uses uh, B12 and many of the other B vitamins to help uh, repair and, um, and nourish our um, central nervous system. Uh, some other things that are very good, holy basil is amazing. It's all, also called tulsi, T-U-L-S-I-E, tulsi in, um, in Ayurvedic. Now, holy basil is amazing at reducing cortisol. So if you feel you're in a really stressful job or a really stressful relationship or something that is where you don't see any immediate relief, like with COVID, like you're stressed all day, reading the news and hearing the, the bad stuff on social media and things like that, you know, you can use Tulsi, just getting Tulsi tea or holy basil tea and drinking that on a regular basis. It is one of the best herbs at reducing cortisol levels I've ever seen. So that's a great one. Now, if you are into big workouts, you may not want to use uh, holy basil too often because it reduces cortisol dramatically. Uh, but if you're not working out and you're just stressed out, Tulsi is great or holy basil is awesome um, because with working out, you do want some cortisol response so that it stimulates a whole uh, feedback for your body to actually heal and repair and grow and build muscle tissue. So, and repair the joints too. Cortisol is good for reducing inflammation, a whole bunch of other stuff that I won't go into, but uh, some other nutrients that can be very important, and you can get them either through food or through supplementation, depending on if you feel this is a major need, you want to address it now, or it's become a problematic state for you, is GABA. GABA is one of my favorites. Now, so you've heard me talk about epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are what they call excitatory neurotransmitters. So they're in your brain and they speed things up. That's what caffeine does. Caffeine uh, accelerates adrenaline, which is known as norepinephrine so uh or epinephrine and this speeds up your your brain right that's why you get the stimulant effects <laughs> from drinking stimulants like coffee or tea or anything that has caffeine in it um so gaba does just the opposite when your brain needs to calm down it uses gaba it's called an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter. So you can get this, our body produces its own, but if you feel you're not producing much, or if you're a heavy caffeine user, getting GABA in before you go to bed to calm that cortisol level down, calm the brains down, especially in the central nervous system. If you find yourself to be a nervous person or a little bit grouchy or whatever, and, and, and overstimulation of the central nervous system can do that to you. GABA is great for that. It's exactly what our body produces to inhibit or reduce those excitatory neurons. Um, and then, of course, theanine. Theanine is found in green tea. And that's why I love green tea as my choice for just a little bit of caffeine. It does give you that caffeine so you're energized a little bit, clear thinking, 
but it also has theanine in it, which acts as a calmative. And it is a pro uh, responder. It actually supports your body's production of GABA. So the inhibitory effect, the calming effect on your, on your neurons, both on your central nervous system and your brain can reduce that energy and calm yourself. That's why I love green tea. It's got stimulation, but it's got a counterbalance calming effect of the theanine in it. But you can get theanine as a supplement as well by itself. Um, now, I am going to leave you with this little bit of advice because it's something that I've found that's worked really well for me. I think the nutritional aspect is, is part of it. That's why I've dedicated my life to looking for the best that nature has and bringing them to you and making them available to you as far as helping our body deal with stress on a nutritional level. But I think there is something that you can also do. You know, when you have a challenge, look for the solution because that is one of the things that reduces stress most. And there's some things that there just, just isn't an immediate solution for, but trusting and having faith in that solution will come. Looking towards others for help, asking for help when you need it, looking for even just putting into motion that the simple ask of, uh, a task of asking somebody else, hey, I'm really stressed right now. Can and just talking or just letting them hear you it just seems to deload that stress a little bit. Don't hold that stress inside. And look, guys out there specifically, I know guys have a hard time talking about it. We all want to say, no, I'm tough. I can handle it. You know, But stress is a killer. That's why guys have so many heart, much more heart attacks. Stress is a killer. Strokes, higher in men. Stress, again. These are contributors, and especially in men, because we're so strong-headed, so bullheaded sometimes that we don't reach out for help from other people. You know, I do everything with this company to help others. I want to help you hit your reach your fitness goals. I want you to, to help you do it in a, a compassionate way through plant-based. I want you to do it in a nutritional way that's actually helping your health and improving your health overall. So I'm doing this for you as much as I am doing this for me because I love these products. I love what they do for me and I want to share them with you. But, you know, guys, stop being so I'm going to be right. I, I've got to have the right answer. I can do this myself. I can do it on my own because that's killing you. It's destroying you. It's stressing you out. And that stress just leads to more anger, leads to the breakdown of your health, and it leads to bad relationships. I mean, if you can't do it for you, do it for the ones you love. If you have children, look in their eyes and say, you know, I'm going to let go of this stress because I don't want you having my stress. We all feel each other's stress. And the best you can do is be the best for others by reducing your own stress, whether it be through exercise, through uh, changes in nutrition, or through meditation and yoga, or just looking for solutions in everyday simple tasks. And just connecting with people and sharing the stress so that you don't feel alone in your stress so that that heaviness of the stress doesn't feel like it's your burden and only your burden so i wanted to leave that with you and i hope you have a healthy and happy day and try to look for the solutions when you see yourself getting stressed when you get your shoulders crouching up like this learn to relax take a few breaths talk to somebody and look for the solutions. What are the solutions? There's always a solution out there. Sometimes it takes a little while to find it, but when you do, it releases that stress. It's like, ah, I got it. That is what our body is doing. It's constantly looking for solutions. And if we can uh, task ourselves to look for it, don't sit on a problem. If you can't find a solution, let it be. Don't take it on. Don't let it build up share it with other people. They may see a solution that you're not seeing. So enjoy, keep up with your workouts, even if they're just calisthenics or workouts at home, flip on a video, an exercise video on the TV, work out with them. Just take a walk outside uh, if you can, um, if parks are open where you're at or whatever, and continue with your health and exercise. Thanks for joining me. Keep that stress level down and um, you'll see great results, better recovery, better health, and you'll have a better, more positive influence on all those around you. Thanks for all you do.